what is going on collector welcome back to my channel it's your boy adam raw like comment share subscribe um yeah i started a video about um you know catholicism and doing the combining the catholic prayers right so of course you got catholicism right with catholicism we have three prayer types we have novenas chaplets and rosaries right the novenas usually do nine days and it's all requesting so that's all speaking to god or speaking to whoever we are then you have the chaplets in which we are giving thanks right and listening right then you have the rosaries in which we are doing in remembrance of right so what is a prayer and you know uh let's break everything down what is a prayer so a prayer essentially is equivalent to a mantra right so with the mantra we see those in hindu and buddhism we see it uh we see it in spell work and stuff like that uh, we see it in um you know church a lot you know especially not just with prayers but hymns as well that's what a mantra is mantra is using the voice to channel a certain energetic way right that's what it does you're using your voice you're using sound to channel certain energetic waves right um this energy these prayers you know um these prayers are powerful right because they are they have like words you know they're made of words basically and the words is powerful because there's power in the in the you know in the tongue right the reason why there's power in the tongue is because the tongue is given to create definition okay so basically when they say birds of a feather flock together that's exactly what it is because essentially in life you know we have situations where we are running with the crew running with the group or whatever when that group get labeled as something and if you are part of that group you're labeled with that too and then essentially what happens is you become what that definition is right so that's why there's power in the in the tongue right because the power in the tongue has the power to release bind and loose things on people's lives including your own definition is powerful right because it decides what is and what isn't what shall and what shall not be through meanings right and yeah i started the video and then i had to read you know redo my video because i had to go look at a prayer which we're going to look at in a moment here so then you have the uh the how generally how the prayers are set up especially with catholicism most of the prayers that you guys have are you know you have a book of prayers for different things different saints and stuff like that which is good you know because it's pretty much almost laid out for you guys but like i was saying before sometimes people attach um they attach their deities to the prayers that you guys do so it's like say if like um catholicism and voodoo so if you're in spiritual warfare with someone who's doing voodoo as you're praying that catholic prayer they may be praying or chanting that prayer in reverse or they may be chanting the prayer the version the a version of that prayer to whatever orisha that they call out to right so essentially here you we have uh with prayers it starts off with an acknowledgement the catholic prayers are a lot there's a lot of acknowledgement in here you're acknowledging the presence of god you're acknowledging that god is here you acknowledge that the god in you by saying that you're only here because of god you acknowledge the power that god set in in over the catholic church you acknowledge the power that it has over your community over you over your family over the things that you think say and do you acknowledge god's involvement you acknowledge the angels involvement you acknowledge the saints involvement you there's a lot of acknowledgement right a lot of times when we do our uh our prayers you know um the first thing that we do is acknowledgement in the name of the father the son and holy spirit that's acknowledging the power of the holy trinity right so then after that we go our father from our heaven hallowed be thy name that's another acknowledgement you know and then if you do the apostles creed it's uh uh, um, I believe in Jesus Christ. I believe he. I, be, well, I believe in God. I believe in, the, in Jesus Christ Almighty. I believe in the Holy Spirit. I believe, you know, he. Um, I believe that he uh, rose, that he died, rose again. You know, the whole Apostle Creed. I'm not, you know. So, anyway, then you have prayers of remembrance. 
those prayers of remembrance generally are like Hail Mary's, like Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, you know? And then you have the prayers that are connected to requests. Saint Michael the Archangel, you are the prince of the angels, but in your humility, you recognize that God is God and you are but his servant. Unlike Satan, you were not overcome with pride, but with steadfast humility. Pray that I may also partake in the spirit of humility. It is in the spirit of that humility that I ask your intercession for my petition, right? That's a request, but it's also an intercession, right? Another request will be, oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins. Save us from the fires of hell. Lead us all, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. There's a, of course, you always end it with an acknowledgement. And then at the end, you're saying, uh, the, you know, the acknowledgement. With the acknowledgement, it usually goes something like, uh, uh, all, all powerful almighty God who by a prodigy of goodness and faith has appointed this uh, glorious archangel Saint Michael the archangel prince of thy church you see and then you can always end it with in the name of the father the son and the holy spirit amen so there's always the trinity before the trinity after generally right so with, like I was saying before the reason why this is important with spiritual warfare is because when you have a book, you have a set, the, the devil knows exactly what prayers you're gonna run to in order to try to get something off of you. He knows exactly what it is and he may even put something in a way to keep that, keep you from accessing that or by trying to uh, manipulate it in some way, shape or form, right? So, it's all for me to me it's always good to have your own personal prayers i'm not telling you what to pray here you know if you're good with the book of prayers or certain prayers that is 100 percent fine i'm not here to change you or change your uh, how you do things at all this is just uh ideology and this is just to give you something to think about right all those book of prayers that you guys have the book of prayers that you guys have it came from somewhere it came from someone's mind and by practicing those for centuries, it has given those prayers power, right? But what has also equal to power is when you go before God and you take the time to create something new with him. Do you know why Psalms is so powerful? Psalms is powerful because it is a communication from, from David to God. It's, it's a poetry book from David to God. It's a poetry book. It's a book of poetry. You see? So, prayer is a key, right? It's like a key. Who you pray to and what you're praying for is a door. That key, you can as you change the key, well, as you change the door, it's going to require a different key. So why not custom make a key for a custom made door? Is essentially what I'm, you know. But anyway, um, this video is a lot, that's a lot, lot, lot faster than the last video because I was stumbling over a lot of stuff and I'm going, uh, uh, uh. but you know, that's how it is when you're trying to talk about something of God though. You know, because the devil don't want that kind of stuff to get out. He don't want it to get out. You see what I'm saying? Don't want it to get out. So, um, basically, I'm going to create a prayer with you guys today, and I'm going to show you how it goes, okay? So, with Catholicism, uh, yeah, Book of Prayers, okay. So, generally, this is was this originally was the output outline that I was going to use, Our Father, Hail Mary, and a Remembrance. Our Father, Hail Mary, and a Remembrance. But, you know, uh, a rosary is basically the opposite of this, right? That's basically the opposite. I didn't think about that until after I wrote it, whatever, okay? So, anyway... What I'm going to do here is I'm going to take the time to build a custom prayer that contains the novena, the chaplet, and the rosary together, okay? Now, I'm not going to go into super length or whatever, and this is off the top of my head, right? On the last video, I was doing Archangel Uriel, right? I'm going to do St. Gabriel this time. Chaplet, St. Michael still, 
and then we're going to still tap into that uh, joyful mystery right okay so basically if i was going to use all three of these together i would do something like uh, in the name of the father the son and holy spirit amen acknowledge the holy trinity and then I will go into uh, the Novena by, you know, St. Gabriel. St. Gabriel, the Archangel, you are the... God has uh, appointed you as messenger of the angels. Wait, St. Gabriel, the Archangel, you are the... Wait, St. Gabriel... Um, oh, that was the problem I had with the last video. I'll just do St. Michael. I'll do St. Michael's uh, Novena, and then I'll do, um, that way I don't have to go, uh, I'm going to do Archangel, uh, let's see here, Uriel, Archangel Uriel, Chaplet, I'm going to use his Chaplet. And then we're gonna do the joyful mystery, right? Okay, so here we go. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, you are the, we honor you as a prophet, protector of the church and guardian of our soul. Inspire us with your humility, courage, and strength that we may reject sin and perfect our love for our heavenly Father. And your strength and humility slay the evil and pardon the heart so that nothing will keep us from God. Saint Michael the Archangel, I ask for the zeal to see, uh, the zeal to serve God faithfully right and then we we'll stop right there and then we'll say holy 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 lord god of power and might heaven and earth are full of your glory glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end amen holy 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 lord god of power and might the lord is full of your glory the earth is full of your glory glory be to the father and to the son and to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now and ever shall be world without end and the joyful mystery that we're going to tap into will be the um, the uh, Jesus at the temple. You know the one, right? Okay. So with that that one, we're going to remember Jesus in the temple, right? Okay. So now let's get started. So the way I want to do this, I'm going to do the Holy Trinity first. Because I'm using a rosary, I'm going to do my Apostles Creed. After my Apostles Creed, I'm going to do my Our Father. I'm going to do my Hail Marys. Three times. And then, well, three times. And then right after that, guess what? We're going to that joyful mystery, right? And you're going to remember Jesus. Let's see, uh, was it um, the first, or you can just do like the first joyful mystery. First joyful mystery. And I don't remember them off bang. So after you say that, you're gonna do your Our Father, right? And then after you do your Our Father, guess what? Instead of doing the Hail Marys, you're gonna do your um, Holy Holy Holies, right? Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, the heaven and earth is full of your glory. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, never shall be, world without end. And when you do this, what you're going to be thinking about is that first, the same thing that you contemplate for that jo first joyful mystery. You see what I'm saying? And then after you do your 10, which is on the rosary bead, you're going to end it with St. Michael the Archangel. You are the Prince of the Am. St. Michael the Archangel, we honor you as a prophet, protector of the church, and guardian of our soul. Inspire us with your humility, courage, and strength that we may reject sin and perfect our love for our Heavenly Father. So you're going to do that St. Michael prayer, right? And then that's it, right? That's, that's the first third of it. <laughs> because what happens is you run out of these these St. Michael prayers because you got the St. Michael prayer for you know honoring him as a protector you got the prayer you know uh, for uh, his humility 
and you got the prayer for um what was that um his defense But in all honesty, I would do the uh, humility one. No, I would, you know, you could, you could pick whichever one you would do. But essentially, this, this, this technique, this method here is something that, you know, you just, you know, you put it together how you want, whether you agree with it or not. You know, just put something together and then you can practice it with your family. You and your family can piece it together or whatever. Man. That right there was only an example. It's not something that I would use use because i can see it like off rip i can see a lot of inconsistencies where um honestly with the joyful mystery if i was to do that i would go back to um the part the uh no the part of the saint michael novena where you do it nine days in a row you know the part where the zeal to you know, blah, 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 blah. Or um, that I might see the least of my, see the light of God in the least of my brothers and sisters. You know what I'm saying? Or St. Michael, uh, pray for me that I may see the zeal, you know, the the um, light of God in the least of my brothers and sisters. And I would do those, those nine ones, you know. But then again, I wouldn't do 10 holy, holy, holies either because that would basically you'd be there all day. So I would do maybe three of those. And then one of those, one out of the nine for the novenas. You see what I'm saying? But either way, you know, you just, you know, doctor it up. Now, when I did this, what happens is you force demonic forces to come out of their familiar homes, come out of their familiar spaces, come out of their familiar places, what they're familiar with, and you subject them to the unknown. Okay? That's why if you create your own prayer, create something that you believe in. Don't create something just to create it. Create something that you believe in, something that you can put your heart into. If you don't, if you create something that you just can't stand behind, you can't put your heart into, those doubts is what those spirits are gonna pick up on. And then they're gonna feed off of it and they're gonna run you from here to wherever, wherever, right? It's about confidence more than a prayer. That confidence, okay? Now, when it comes to Catholicism and uh, spirituality, I know those are two conflicting things, absolutely. However, they run parallel together. I mean, they run right into each other because the Catholic Church has been doing exorcisms on spirits for a long time, long time. You know, and the prayers that they that they use, uh, you know, that secret arsenal, they keep put up. So there's a book of prayers for us, and then there's a book of prayers for the exorcist. That exclusion, that exclusion, adds power. To the prayer that is what makes it that is what adds on to the power because it's 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 powerful right they there's the belief that they you know the church can do it right but there's also that that exclusion that that seclusion from everybody else that seclusion from everybody else basically adds power because if everybody knows it, it, you know, definition works in in two ways, right? This is why when you're doing spiritual work, it's best not to tell all your secrets, right? Because there is power in things that everybody do, right? And that's because everybody's mind is focused on it, right? But there is even, there's also great power in things that you do that others don't because that's exclusivity. What you do today 
decides where you go. There's this saying that says, I choose to do today what others refuse to do so that I can go where they ref where they can't go tomorrow. I do what others refuse to do today so that I can go where they cannot go tomorrow. That's, that's the spirit that should be behind your prayers. You see what I'm saying? You should pray what, you know what I'm saying? You should pray in a manner of, not, you know, I'm not going to say just for today, but not just for today, but you know, you should do the prayer, do it. You should create a prayer that is difficult, you know, or that you're comfortable with today so that when it comes time to do it, you know, tomorrow, it just rolls off the tongue. I've had success with these, these Catholic, these Catholic prayers. I've, i there was day that I prayed them four days. I used to pray uh, some of them uh, four times a day, four times a day. Sometimes more than that, depending on what I needed or what was going on. And I've I've done it. I've done uh, Saint Michael Novena maybe like fifty times in a row, all nine days, fifty times in a row. I think I did it for like two years straight one time. The St. Michael prayer, nine days in a row, two years straight. That's powerful. That's really powerful. It's powerful. But when you get your prayer life together like that, everything else falls in line, you know, and that's something I had to learn. If you, with the prayers that you have, you start learning secrets about Catholicism. And I'm gonna show you secrets about each angel. The secret behind St. Michael well, not secret, secret, but when I was praying this prayer, when I would pray the St. Michael prayer, one thing that St. Michael told me was about, it was, it was about why he was so, why he, you know, do what he do, right? Uh, I didn't realize that St. Michael actually was um, hurt or heartbroken when he had to watch all those other angels descend from heaven because those are like his brothers and sisters you know what I'm saying and imagine if you're in charge and you had to watch a, you know you're you're you know you're a prince right and you had to watch your brothers and sisters be thrown into a prison or a jail cell or whatever. And you just had to watch them go into torment. That that will that would change you. It would change you. There was something he saw in hell that just it was just unbelievable. But I'm glad he didn't rebel. I'm glad he didn't. Then there's Archangel Uriel, right? When I prayed the prayer for with Archangel Uriel, his energy was really lighthearted. It's really hot. It's really light, lighthearted. It, it's firm, okay? It's really firm. It's strong. It's, but he loves when people come to him to try to learn stuff. He has the embodiment of like a teacher, but he will not just teach anybody. You see what I'm saying? Archangel Uriel, he, he just, I don't know. It's, it's just, he's just like a really kind, patient teacher is what I get. Things that you want to know, he'll teach you. Things that you want to see, he'll show you. He just, that was the secret behind him. He just loves to teach. He just loves, it's like he just loves being around people because they're like children, essentially, to him, you know? 
And then Archangel Raphael. Archangel Raphael was assigned to a lot of different jobs. But what really made me ask Raphael, like, why did you become a healer? You know what I'm saying? Because in the vibe that I was picking up was because maybe at some point in his ascension, he was wounded and he needed to learn, he needed to heal. You see what I'm saying? At some point, the vibe that I got from him was that he was wounded some kind of way. He was wounded or he knows what it's like to be wounded. He knows what it's like to be wounded. He knows what it's like to be hurt. And as a result, he geared towards healing. That's just like Archangel, you know, St. Michael. That That's the reason why I had a question about that. Maybe at some point, maybe that's what that hell thing was. It made him feel powerless. And so now he's in a situation where he's, you know, and this is all theoretical, okay? Because, I mean, don't get me wrong, I got my downloads, so, you know, but for devout, Christ, you know, Catholics and stuff, I know you guys got different point of views, but um, the vibe that I was getting from St. Michael was like, you know, it really broke his heart to watch his brothers fall like they did. And I'm wondering if the reason why he's so protective is because at some point in his incarnation or his ascension or his development, he felt powerless. That's just like if you were to go, if you were being bullied, right? Uh, and most people that end up being bullied, eventually they learn to defend themselves, right? That's what brought me to uh, St. Gabriel. St. Gabriel told me that when the earth did all the stuff that he did, that was him. It wasn't just God, but it was him. That was the that was his his power. Saint Gabriel has been he's been waiting a long time to find at least one soul that he didn't have to judge, you know. Hold on. Let me turn that on. He had went he was waiting for one soul he just wanted just one soul at least just one that was pure enough to not be condemned to hell you know what i'm saying that was his thing like it, just that one soul. that's why you saw him come to jesus's aid all the time it was all not all the time but most of the time it was saint gabriel it was gabriel going to to jesus delivering messages and things like that gabriel was his guardian angel and Gabriel, basically, Jesus was, Jesus is the soul that Gabriel had always wanted to work with. Always. Because it seemed like in his life, he always had to condemn people to hell or there was some miscommunication or he had to put his judgment, you know what I'm saying? On certain people for whatever. And he, it just got born. Well, not born, but it just became anonymous. So he wanted to experience at least one soul, just one that could follow all the rules. And guess what happened when he, when he found that one soul? That one soul sacrificed himself to save everybody else. Do you know how hurtful that is to, let's say if you had like, um, you had a job, right? You're CEO. You're looking for somebody to take over your company. And you just want one good candidate, one good candidate, just one good candidate, one good candidate. That one good candidate comes in, right? Train them, teach them everything. You're excited. You go home talking about it. You come to work ready. They come to work ready. It's a lot of excitement and everything. And then all of a sudden, a layoff has to come, right? And you're thinking, okay, well, you know, we have to lay some people off, whatever. And this person sacrifices their salary. Say, okay, well, usually you have to you have to cut, let's say, ten people. What if 
you cut me instead and keep those 10 people and those 10 people keep their job and the salary you pay me, you pay them and keep them working. That's that's sort of the, that's the gist of what happened. The gist. Gabriel finally found one soul that was worth keeping, that was worth saving. And he sacrificed himself. There's other stories, but, you know, that's just what I got. Anyway, that's all I got for you guys. Um, like I say, you know, I'm not giving you guys, telling you guys what to think. Just something to think about. Um, you know, especially with these uh, prayers, you have a lot to work with. And you can put them in any kind of combination of form. You can even convert them over to Greek or Latin if you choose to. You know? Latin prayers. Santa Michele Arcangeli, defender nos and pray to y'all. Contra Nequitium. I can't remember the whole thing, so yeah. <laughs> all right, you guys. All right, I love y'all all, and uh, I believe. Uh, okay, so the reason. Why, oh, I forgot the spiritual aspect of this. Okay, so especially if you're, you know, going through spiritual warfare. When you after you develop this prayer, right? You can, uh, you know, the reason why I I combined those prayers and made it with the rosary is because, you know, most people have a rosary nearby. And if you remember the gist of it, you can practice it as a rosary. You see what I'm saying? And that's why you got your rosary beads. Or you can create one and practice it as a novena. Whereas, you know, one of the novenas for St. Michael is... Um, what well, I pray, you know, for the zeal to see the least of God. I mean, see the um, zeal to live my life in accordance to Christ's teachings, right? That's a novena. You don't have to always use that novena. I mean, you have to always use that phrase. You can say something like, I pray that the Lord keeps his hedge of protection over me today. I pray that I be the light in the world that others may need. You see what I'm saying? That novena is malleable. You can change that. You don't have to stick with that one. And of course, you got your chaplets, right? Now, the chaplets, they're pretty cool. But, you know, um, the chaplets are um, almost the same as these prayers that I'm having you create now, or that I'm inspiring you to create now. Because those chaplets, a lot of those are taken. It's like things that, like, say, um, Archangel uh, Gabriel, right? He says, holy, holy, holy Lord. No, he doesn't say that. That's Uriel. He says something. Hail Mary, Hail Mary, full of grace. 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 That was his actual words that he spoke in the Bible. So you take bits and pieces of that, things that they actually said and repeated to channel their energy. God's word never comes back to him void. So if you take the words of archangels, um, prophets, and things of that nature, and you chant, you repeat them, put them in repetition, it will drum up and channel their energy for you, essentially, right? All right, that's all I got. I love y'all all. Y'all take it easy and uh, have fun with this. Uh, the next video, if you're watching this, more than likely the next video isn't going to be really for you, but feel free to come through and um, I'll decide what religion I'm going to do next. All right, peace. Oh, wait, one more thing. Another reason, another reason, another way to use this prayer. It helps out a lot when you guys light your candles. So when you do your candles and you know what I'm saying, and you do your nine day candles and candle work and stuff, like you know, prayers and stuff like that, create your own prayer and attach it to that. Create your own prayer and attach it to it. And then monitor the results. Don't go with the in expectation. Do it and see what you, what, you know what I'm saying? Modify it the way you, you know, create your prayer. Get you a candle. Do you a seven-day prayer, nine-day prayer, whatever it may be. And then after you pray it, sit back, wait, and watch the results. Make sure you create, put that prayer in a prayer. Create your own prayer book watch the results 
whatever the result is or whatever you start noticing around you, make sure you journal that in that prayer book. And that'll be whatever that prayer is for. And after that, you can create you another one and do that one. Some people like to do it for money. Some people like to do it for love. Some people like to do it for all kinds of stuff. Okay. All right. Now I love y'all and I'll talk to y'all later.